To me, a bicycle is a functional piece of art, one that should be displayed in a functional way instead of stuffed in a garage or a trunk for that matter. Hope you have a big trunk because I'm putting my bike in it. <laughs> this week, I made a bike cabinet that's a great solution for displaying your bike or for a small home or an apartment. Check it out. This video is sponsored by Simply Safe. More on them later. I built the main portion of this cabinet minus the divider out of a five x five sheet of three quarter inch Baltic birch plywood. And here you see me breaking it down into the eight main pieces that comprise the cabinet. Here's a diagram that explains it a little better. First, the plywood is cut in half to be more manageable. And then I broke it down into four of these 47 inch panels and four of these 13 inch panels. With the panels cut, I marked out the location of the dado for the center divider. I'm creating this dado by cutting the top layer of the panels in half and then gluing it to the bottom layer using this piece to set my spacing. I referenced the glue up off the fence of my table saw to keep everything aligned and then added glue and a few brad nails to hold it all in place. Just make sure to inset the nails far enough so they clear the bevels. Next, I could clamp it all up, making sure to clamp the edges all the way around to get a good seam. For the bevels, I set my table saw blade to 45 degrees and then cut the smaller panels. I had to cut the long panels on the miter saw since my table saw does not have the capacity to support them. In order to get the correct fit of my bicycle, I measured the distance between the wheels and used this square, which was five and a quarter inches tall, to set the height. I made this cardboard template to ensure it all lined up before actually cutting into the panels. And here's a diagram to show you the dimensions that fit my bike. These cutouts are an inch and a half wide all the way around. I drew the location of the cutouts onto the panels themselves. I drilled the ends with a Forstner bit and then finished the cutouts over on my bandsaw. This left me with just a little bit of sanding to clean up the recesses on my spindle sander. Before putting this cabinet together, I added a 1 8 inch rabbit to the back of each piece to accept the backer board later on. Next, I can move on to gluing out the rest of this cabinet, which I did with the help of this band clamp, a couple corner clamps, and I just made sure to check for square often. I needed to make a center divider, and I had this scrap piece laying around that allowed me to build this using only one sheet. I also considered using some of the cedar that I used to make the doors. Speaking of the doors, I used this beautiful cedar board I've had laying around the shop for a while. And I thought the contrast of this cedar against the light colored birch plywood would pop and look really nice. So far you've seen me cut down the board to six inches wide and then cut them to length over on the miter saw. And I glued these into two door panels before sanding the rest of the cabinet. While I'm sanding, let me take off my Johnny Builds hat and put on my detective hat. All kidding aside, some of you may not know that I spent 10 years as a burglary detective and the number one thing I would advocate for homeowners is get a safe and reliable home security system like Simply Safe that's monitored 24 seven by professionals who will call you in an emergency or send police help if needed. And all of this comes at fair and honest prices with no hidden contracts or fees. The system is equipped for worst case scenarios such as losing power, your Wi-Fi going out, or if the system is attacked. During my police career, I've seen firsthand the benefits of having a home security system like Simply Safe when it comes to keeping your family and your home safe. Simply Safe sent me out this system with the works and it included a base station, a smoke detector, a keypad, entry sensors, a doorbell camera, and much more. Everything was easy to install, and the system comes with thoughtful features such as reminders that your door is open and small sensors that you won't even notice. 
To learn more about SimpliSafe and the different systems and features they offer, visit simplysafe.com slash johnnybuilds or click on the link below. And thanks to SimpliSafe for sponsoring this video. To reinforce the miters, I'm using screws and the bit from my Craig jig to drill out the holes. I came back and plugged these with a 3 8 inch dowel and then trimmed it flush. I cleaned up the tire recess by hand sanding and then used the chisel to clean up some high spots. And here you see me measuring the rabbit that will accept the 1 8 inch plywood I'm using as a backer board. I also wanted to add a pop of color to the cabinet, so I painted the backer board this turquoise color, which will show up when I open the doors. Back to the doors, I ran them through my planer to get them down to 3 quarters of an inch before cutting them to fit into the cabinet. This is my first time installing these Euro style hinges and I'm glad I picked up this hinge jig to make the process easier. Once they were installed on the door, I could mark their location inside the cabinet and finish installing all the hinges. For the door handles, I wanted something that stuck with the bicycle theme of this project. I picked up a pair of cheap bicycle chain rings from a local bike shop and cut them in half with an angle grinder and a cutoff disc. I also ground down any sharp burrs that were left behind. I marked the center of the doors and where I wanted to mount the handles before drilling them out and using a portion of it to recess on the back side. I marked the bolts where I needed to trim them back and removed all the hardware so I could add finish. On Baltic Birch, I like to use a satin polycrylic because it maintains that blonde color of the plywood without yellowing, so I applied four coats to the cabinet and the doors. For the legs, I picked up this set of 13-inch raw steel legs from Kit & Co. Now, the build quality on this set is sturdy and very high quality, and I encourage you to check out all their stuff. You see me use their hardware before on a recent coffee table build, and I can attest to the quality of their products. I'll leave a link to the Kit & Co. legs and everything else I use down in the description. I attach the legs with the included hardware and inset them an inch and a quarter from the edge all the way around. Next, I installed the handles and reattached all the hinge hardware. I needed a door stopper, so I made one using a quarter inch nut and a screw. And with that, this bike cabinet was done. I love how this piece came out and now my bike isn't stuffed in the garage when I'm not riding it. I can have it accessible on display while adding some storage for the helmet, some books, and a few other things. This would be the perfect solution if you had a small home or an apartment for storing your bike where space is gonna be at a premium. I'd also like to take a second here to thank all my Patreon supporters. Bike City Woodworks, Brendan Grover, Built by Steven, Ethan Carter Designs, Made by Laurent, Rich 17 Designs, Jenny and Davis, and a special thanks to my top patron, Matt Varighies. Patreon is a way you can support this channel, and if you're interested, there's a link down below. Okay, thanks everyone. I really enjoyed this build, and it's nice to know when I'm done taking my bike off a sweet jump. You ever take it off any sweet jumps? I have an awesome place to store it. Thanks, and I'll see you back here next time.